In John chapter 14, verse 12, it says, Jesus speaking, of course, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And watch, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now, there's a lot in this. <clears throat> Notice he says that we believe on him, the same works he does, and greater we will do also. And he said he, we can do that because he goes to the Father, not because we're super special or great or talented or anything else. And he says that if you ask anything in his name, he will do it so that the Father can be glorified. Now think about that. Jesus is waiting for us to ask so that the Father can be glorified. Amen? So that means we need to ask more for bigger and more so that Jesus can ask the Father. He will do it, and then the Father will be glorified more. Amen? <clears throat> now, when he said he will give you, in verse 16, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Now, you'll notice he said that after he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And that word and connects that. That if you love me, keep my commandments, and because you're keeping my commandments, okay, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Now, that word another is a Greek word, allos, A-L-L-O-S, is the way we would spell it out today. And it means another of the exact same kind an exact duplicate of Jesus. Jesus. So Jesus is saying here, he was the first comforter we got, right? Now, the word comforter, it means comfort, okay? And it is a person, so it is a comforter. But notice it says here that he will give you another comforter so that he may abide with you forever. So this other, now see, the reason Jesus said that is because he knew he had to leave, and because he had to leave, he was going to send another comforter back. So he said, because he said, I'm not going to leave you orphans. He said, I will come back to you and I will send. I'm going to go to the Father and we will send back this other comforter so that he can abide with you forever. And that word abide means to settle down in, make oneself at home. The Holy Spirit wants to settle down in you, settle there, make himself at home. But that means that we have to give him full access. Because you don't feel like you're at home if there are rooms you can't go into. So we need to give him access to our whole life. Now, the word here is that was used for comforter is a Greek word, and it's pronounced parakletos. And it literally is two words. It comes from two words in the Greek, para which means literally beside, and then kletos, which comes from, actually it's an extended word or a, a branch off of the word, which means to be called. So literally the, the very simple definition is that this comforter is going to be the Holy Spirit who is called alongside us. But Jesus said he is going to be in us. So no, we know he's not just going to be beside us. Now watch. The actual definition of the word, parakletos, literally means this. One called alongside to take hold of together against. And you think, wait, that that's, doesn't sound like one sentence. I know it's Greek, okay? But, so, but it literally means one who is called alongside us, literally meaning so close that you're in contact. That's where the idea of to anoint comes from because the word anoint means to rub as though we'd say we're going to rub elbows, meaning we're right there together. And it literally means to rub, and the Holy Spirit is the anointing, 
And he's right there beside it at this point. Now watch. It means he was called alongside us. Now it doesn't mean alongside outside. It means alongside us in our walk. Okay? So it's not like he's standing over here or standing over here. He is called alongside in our walk. So as, as we have our walk in Christ, he is called to walk alongside us in that walk. But now notice, he is called to walk alongside us and to take hold of together against something. So with that, now notice this. This is why he's called the helper. Is because he is called alongside of us to walk with us, to help us. And, he, and whatever problems come, he's going to take hold of that problem together with us. In other words, he can't take hold of that problem till we take hold of it. When we take hold of it, he's going to take hold of it also. You get that? And when he takes hold of it, he's going to take hold of it together with us against that problem. Do you get that? Against that problem. Now, notice that you start, to, when you hear that definition, you'll probably, there are scriptures that probably start coming to your mind. Things of how we don't know how we ought to pray, but the Holy Spirit will pray with us and through us, and he will pray in groanings, but he will pray the perfect will of God for us. So he's actually going to take the problems that we have that are on us. In other words, we take those problems, we see that it's a problem. It's on our mind. It's, it's, it's you know, trying to bother us. And he is there to take hold of that problem with us. And notice, he can't take hold of it if we haven't taken hold of it. Now, what I mean is, if you don't decide that that problem is going to end, he can't decide that the problem is going to end. Right? He is your helper. You are not his helper. He is your helper. That means he can't help unless you're doing See, we're the doer of the word. He helps by helping us, and his help is he supplies the power to cause the word to come to pass. But first, we have to do the word. See, if I don't lay hands, then he can't make whole. Do you get it? So he, has, he works in conjunction with us. Why? Because he's in us. 